Have you ever wanted to shoot film and look at the results instantly without having to wait for them to come back from the developers? Well, that's what Edwin H. Land also thought, the founder of Polaroid, when he released the Model 95 in 1948. With that release, Polaroid became an instant household name. However, it wasn't until 1971 that people would be introduced to the now infamous white framed photos that we all associate Polaroid with. And that camera was the SX70. So the camera itself is actually an SLR, with a mirror inside which moves up when you press the shutter release. The lens is a four element glass construction with a fixed f8 aperture and it shoots between 1/175th and up to 10 seconds. Now, there are several models, but mine's a cheaper Model 3, which I think is made more of plastic. And uh, there are actually several uh, accessories made for the, the models as well. I think the most notable and probably most common was the, the flash bar bulbs. Uh, they were kind of expendable. I think it had like kind of eight usages before you had to kind of replace them. However, there's actually a Hong Kong company which uh, produces uh, alternatives which are reusable. So how is it that I'm still able to shoot my SX-70? Well, in 2008, three people founded a company called The Impossible Project. And later on in that same year, they bought the last kind of remaining production machinery from a factory in the Netherlands, which used to produce all of uh, Polaroid's kind of films. Initially, film was created for three models, the SX-70, the 600 box type, and the Spectra. However, from 2019, they discontinued the Spectra line. Over the years, the company has gone through several rebrands. As mentioned before, they started out as the Impossible Project. However, in 2017, they changed themselves to uh, Polaroid Originals, and then most recently, just to Polaroid. I think I was introduced to the Impossible Project maybe in 2014, possibly through uh, kind of a YouTuber, uh, maybe even talking about the SX-70 or even the kind of the resurgence, kind of reintroducing the film back into the kind of the community. I probably paid a bit of a premium buying it directly from them. However, I was a bit cautious about buying a Polaroid camera on the aftermarket, like uh, on eBay, just because I kind of wanted a bit of peace of mind and reassurance that it was actually going to work. And obviously them selling it directly through their website, I knew that it was um, gonna be fine and they were all tested and if there were issues that they were obviously fixed before being sold off. However, when I got it, I was really disappointed. And I think it was because maybe my expectations were too high, but it was a bit strange. Like the pictures would just be really overexposed or underexposed. There was kind of no middle ground and the images were kind of quite streaky. So I sent the camera back. Um, I was reassured though that everything was completely fine. They sent it back and I think I may have even been given a couple of packs kind of for reimbursement really. And again I ran them through and the same thing happened again. So I just kind of assumed that was how the camera was. You know I guess when you see people's images people only show like the best that they've, they've done. So you kind of assume that that's what you're able to kind of produce. You don't see the kind of the mishaps or the kind of the, after, uh, the outtakes. So I just kind of put it on the shelf and kind of ignored it really. Afterwards, I had read though, that the Impossible Project's chemistry back then was really hit and miss, especially with that being 30 to 40 minutes to process. It's kind of hardly the instant film that people were hoping for. However, fast forward till now, an Impossible Project have updated their formula. So I kind of thought, why not give it a go? So I bought one pack of each and headed out.
I only shot with one pack of each, so this is far from an in-depth review of the film. However, what I can say is with the old film, I maybe got one decent photo out of a pack of eight, whereas now I probably get more than half. Out of the two film, I think I prefer the black and white, but man, the colours do look nice. I think I just prefer the latitude of the, the black and white, it just seems to capture more detail. I enjoy both really, and I'm just glad now that the film has come such a long way that I can start using the camera again. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.